terms of the the body of work as a whole, um, these are all a series of seven paintings that uh, are about the uh, they're moments from the production of a completely fictionalized film. Um, I have had been developing some work over a few years before that were very much about fictional moments, constructed moments. Uh, I was fascinated by things like museum dioramas in natural history museums. And so the idea of creating these constructed, contained, fictional worlds was something that very much fascinated me. Um, and cinema, in a sense, is the ultimate embodiment of creating a, a, a false and fabricated world. And so, initially, I was thinking about making one painting uh, that was about the, uh, the process of, of making fiction. And uh, that painting was initially the architect's house. And from the back of that, as I, as I was developing it, I thought, this could actually make a series. Uh, and it would be interesting to explore a generic theme, uh, which in the case of all these pictures was the notion of disaster, and then to explore that throughout a, a larger number of paintings. And they're all ultimately interlinked. Uh, they tend to be, some are, are explicitly catastrophic. It's, there's ones of the, the car crash and the collapsed motorway that you uh, realize immediately is based on disaster. And there are other slightly smaller, quieter, more domestic disasters like the, the family in their kitchen, um, where there's this external presence of a voice coming through the phone. And you, you're not sure what that news is necessarily going to be. And also there's a young boy playing underneath the table, creating his own disaster. So there's there's all these, these themes that run throughout and connect the pictures, um, and also some of which are just the repetition of certain characters throughout the images themselves. Um, in terms of the way the uh, series relates to the exhibition as a whole and the title of the exhibition as a whole, um, I'm probably not the best person to answer that. The, the, the curator, I'm sure, has a much better angle on that than myself, but the notion that the world belongs to you is something that I've always, in a sense, employed in terms of the making of my own work in the studio. Everything I do is made inside the studio. Uh, every element of these pictures is a set or a miniature or a toy. They're primarily friends who I've brought into the studio to be part of the pictures. Occasionally, they might be professional uh, performers or extras um, for, for film and TV. Um, so, in a sense, what I've done with all these pictures is to reconfigure my version of a world I've understood through film. Um, so it's a way of engaging with the world and then subjectivizing it and remaking it in some way and then putting it back out there. Uh, so in that sense, uh, the world belongs to you is something that I, I, I very much uh, do on a daily basis in the studio. Essentially given the fact that these are all about uh, the making of a film, the, the way they were made, in a sense, mirrors the production of a movie that I had to think thematically about the way the pictures would interrelate with each other, what they were going to be. In terms of the exact content of them, that changed as I went along, but I would have to plan it in the sense that each painting had a location, and the location had to be made in some shape or form. Um, the kitchen set, for example, was, was built one-to-one -one scale inside the studio so that the, the models could pose within it. Um, and then other paintings uh, were just, I would make the sets as miniature models. Um, and then the, the one of the dam, for example, is, is all uh, one to 20 scale and the, the car inside it is only a, a model that's about 20 centimeters long. Um, and then the, the models would come in and pose with cardboard things so that they would all, I'd know where they were, and then all the elements get amalgamated within the final painting. Um, so it it, 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 it in a sense mirrors the production of making a movie, but in a very homemade, low-tech way. Um, so I would, from conception to completion, this whole series probably took about 14, 14 months maybe. Um, to complete. I think the, the spectator's role in looking at the pictures is actually quite an active one. 
Um, all I've done is try to set up locations and scenes that are generic in nature, that their very familiarity from film is something that interests me. This, the, the, the city that it's based on is a fictionalized one, but it's a, a thinly disguised idea of Los Angeles. And at the time I'd made these paintings, I'd never actually been to LA in my life. So it was a version of Los Angeles I'd understood through film and the films that we all watch culturally um, and share. So I, I wanted to set up things that were immediately familiar to people, but not to necessarily specify the action of that moment so that the, the viewer, in a sense, becomes their own director and that they can dictate what the moments are. And the moments within each picture are very... I wanted to choose things that had, uh, had doubt within them, that there was an insecurity in the moment. The figures at the pool party, which is this image of affluence in, in sort of the equivalent of the Hollywood Hills, is actually a, a hijacked moment. The, all the figures are looking out of the picture as if they've somehow been fixed or frozen. And that moment of amb ambiguity was something that I felt that was quite key within the image because you don't know whether they're responding to something that's real in terms of something taking place down in the valley or it could just be an authorial or directorial voice telling a bunch of actors what to do and that ambivalence was something that I wanted to create within the pictures which hopefully means that the viewer uh, isn't given answers, they're only asked questions as to what the pictures might be. There was a, there was a book I was reading in um, while I was researching um, the project and um, the writer Mike Davis talked about the, the fictional destruction of Los Angeles which has happened in film and books over so many times kind of reps, represents uh, an insecurity in, in the idea of American exceptionalism and I thought there's, some, there's something about the West Coast of America given its role in, in cinema and the whole notion of a, of a city of dreams and a factory of dreams and, and in relation to the whole American dream itself and the fact that it's literally at the edge of culturally the Western world and it's at the end of that and there's something inherently apocalyptical in the way that we, we view Los Angeles in, in, in terms of film and I thought that made it a very rich place uh, metaphorically and the fact that it's made up of different geological strata, you've got hills, you've got valley, it's on insecure ground in terms of San Andreas Fault, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, to me, the whole idea of these different strata, whether they be geographical, whether it be social and economic and political, were themes that I wanted to carry throughout the pictures. Have you visited yeah. LA since completing this series? I have. I have. Um, one of the things, actually, it's interesting because it's, uh, it's only in retrospect that I realize it's started to find its way into newer work, um, was when I got to LA, um, I, A, I loved it. I, I, my fear was that I would, I would hate it. It's, it's, it's a, a place that I've been fascinated through fiction, you know, fascinated by through fiction for a long time. But when I got there, it was all the incidental things that I found most fascinating, the really quiet things, the way their sort of concrete architecture interacts with, with the, the natural environment. It was all the sort of edges and the peripheries of the city that I found most fascinating. And interestingly, with this bit body of work, which, because it takes place at night, uh, there's, there's quite a baroque, rich, cinematic element to it. In terms of actually going to LA itself, um, that combined with... Uh, where, where my new situa uh, studio is situated in London, uh, which is again on very much the margins of, of the city. Uh, I've, I've come back and started making work that's actually, I would say, much more, or not necessarily documentary, but much more sober, much more desaturated and quiet in terms of its imagery. And, and I'd say that was a direct response to actually being in LA, the, uh, the, the fantasy as opposed to the reality. Um. The relationship between film, photography, and painting it is clearly 
uh, visible within the work that I make. Uh, and I think it's all been part of a, a very long journey in terms of trying to work out a way in which I could paint. Uh, I, I started painting quite young, but pretty much quit at the age of 19 when I got to art school. And um, like any young um, progressive thinking young artist, I, I was making conceptually based work, thinking that's what I needed to be doing. And I realized that for the next 15 years, all the work that I made was was about, about painting, but it wasn't painting. I, it, I was circling it the whole time, thinking it would be too much of an anachronism to take on big figure-based painting that's all about touch and gesture and, and those kinds of things. And it was looking at uh, artists like Jeff Wall, uh, other photographers like um, Philip Lorca de Corsia, Larry Sultan, um, people like that where I, who, who in a sense have taken um, a painterly stasis that exists in grand history paintings and put it into documentary photography. And in a way, I've, I've tried to just go back and borrow some of what they've put into photography and take it back into painting to see what would be possible. And again, this relates to my whole interest in fiction, is the fact that in making these big, um, almost uh, grand historical paintings that are redolent of a certain kind of 19th century um, history painting, I, I wanted to A, imbue them with doubt, but B, the give the viewer the knowledge that they're constructed at every turn, that there is fabrication and there is a, a, a lie going on in terms of the way that they're put together so that you never confuse them with any kind of truth um, and that they're always, always forced through my own, own kind of subjective position. Um, and so it's been fascinating for me to, uh, especially given that my... My great loves in painterly terms are, are, are generally go back to Baroque painters such as Velasquez, um, and then right the way through to Manet, who, you know, they're probably my two favorite ever painters. Um, but it's, it's been interesting to kind of push things through another direction and actually learn a lot more from contemporary artists in order to sort of bring it back into the painting. Um, but it's taken, it took a long time before I, before I even had the courage to try and make a painting uh, of this type. Um, and uh, it's been great fun ever since, so I'm not regretting it.